Hi, I'm Dr. Cameron Van Eck, a researcher with the Dunlap Institute for Astronomy and Astrophysics. My research specialty is studying cosmic magnetic fields using radio astronomy. So if we define astronomy as looking at stuff in space, then radio astronomy is the subset of that where we're looking at naturally occurring radio emission created by things in space. So radio telescopes are traditionally are designed very similar to visible light telescopes in the sense of having a curved surface focusing light over a large area to a single point and then having a sensor at that point to gather the light and convert it into a stored signal. The difference though is where a visible light telescope would use a camera as its sensor, a radio telescope has an antenna which captures radio waves and converts them into electronic signals that we can then digitize and analyze. Some radio telescopes are built a little bit differently in the sense of skipping having the reflector component and just consist of a series of mini antennas put together. Each of the antennas captures a signal, gets digitized, and then the signals are combined in software to, to act as a single very large telescope. Radio astronomy allows us to explore different physics that can occur out in the universe compared to visible light telescopes. So visible light telescopes tend to mostly see things that are hot, a few hundred to a few thousand degrees, whereas radio astronomy or radio emission tends to come from a whole slew of different physical processes. For example, hydrogen gas anywhere in the universe produces small amounts of radio emission, and there's a lot of hydrogen gas in the universe. And so we can detect that with radio astronomy and map out hydrogen gas throughout the universe. Also, radio emission tends to come from some of the most extreme physics in the universe, environments like pulsars, the surfaces of neutron stars, which produce intense bursts of radio emission, but also black holes, or more specifically, the environment around black holes, in which great amounts of radio emission are produced by the material as it falls into the black hole. So I work on cosmic magnetism, which is the study of magnetic fields in different astrophysical environments. And in particular, I focus on the environment of the interstellar medium, the quiet, empty areas between the stars. And so I'm interested in understanding what are the magnetic fields doing in the quiet regions? How are they created? What are their properties? And to study these, I use radio astronomy because there are a number of physical processes where the magnetic fields in interstellar space can imprint signals on radio emission. And so by studying this radio emission, we can work backwards to find the magnetic fields that cause these processes. Ah, so I first learned about radio astronomy in my first year of university in the introductory astronomy course that I took. Late in the course, the instructor started talking about the different kinds of telescopes, starting with the variations on the visible light telescopes. And then he started to introduce other kinds, ultraviolet and X-ray telescopes, infrared, microwave, and radio telescopes as well. And my mind was completely blown to, with the sudden realization that you could do astronomy with all these other different forms of light, that we weren't confined to just visible light, and that all of the physics that we know about on Earth that uses all these different forms of light also applies to the universe at large. And so we can do all of this additional astronomy. And so I became really fascinated with the idea of the unseen universe, the things out in the universe that maybe aren't bright sources of visible light, things that we can't see with the naked eye or with a standard telescope, and yet things that are out there producing all kinds of other signals that we can measure, observe, and use to understand the universe. 